In the immortal words of Whitney Houston, I believe the children are our future. Uh, the question is, what kind of world are our children going to inherit? Uh, and what are they going to do before they settle into comfortable and safe middle age? Um, this is a photo from Coachella. Um, I hope concerts and events like this go forward sometime uh, in the future. Um, so in some ways, this is kind of a nostalgic look back on back when people could actually meet uh, in person. I couldn't find the source um, for this photo. It's from 2019. Uh, some friends of our, uh, ours uh, rented a house in Palm Springs and, and went there. When you get to comfortable middle age, you can afford more comfortable um, and uh, uh, sleeping situations and, and avoid camping when you go to these kind of big uh, festivals. Hopefully in Australia, ours will, will come back soon enough. Um, so yeah, the population distribution pyramids that we looked at in the beginning of today suggest that there are some parts of the world in which we don't have enough young people in order to replace the people who are getting older and and dying or retiring and not contributing um, to wage generation and taxation other countries that have the opposite pro uh, problem they have lots of young people um, that are uh, at a higher rate than replacement in a number of countries that are leading to increasing population density, increasing competition for scarce resources. And so for today, um, I signed a couple of articles looking at um, youth bulges as an explanation for conflict. It, this is one of those arguments that was in the literature 15 years or so ago, and I haven't seen as much research on it um, recently, in part because um, there isn't a lot more to kind of say about it, that it is kind of like one of those background conditions that um, statistically younger people are more likely to uh, have lower opportunity costs, more likely to engage in risky behavior, or more likely to join conflict or other forms of uh, violence. And so these countries that have large amounts of population uh, growth in uh, the youth are facing twin challenges of both trying to find jobs and economic opportunities for these people, as well as also to prevent um, violent behaviors that can make things uh, worse. I'm working on a paper right now looking at the youth wings of political parties and how the um, major political parties in a number of different countries developed and developing often outsource some of their less savory behavior um, or, or more violent or intimidating or um, um, confrontational behavior for the youth wings of, of, the, of the political parties. Um, so what is it about what are youth bulges and how they affect the overall probability of conflict? You can, you can see in a lot of different areas that the youth are more likely to engage in a number of different behaviors, including um, occupying Wall Street, probably before your time now, but after um, the economic crisis in 2008, 2009, um, there was this occupation of uh, a park near Wall Street and a pre um, pressure put in the United States to try to engage in more redistribution or more fair policies um, for um, for segments of the population in the U.S. Um, that didn't have that kind of slice of the pie um, that uh, other countries might have. They ended up being uh, swept away and it kind of fell apart. Um, you see youth groups, like I mentioned before, in um, in Nepal. Youth wings of political parties are big, including um, uh, the, the, uh, the Marxists. Um, the youth, um, I remember... It's kind of sad that I'm no longer in that kind of age group and no longer considering one of those risk factors. Um, but it is disconcerting the distribution in Australia as well as in other countries that these certain age groups are definitely the most at risk of uh, engaging in violent behavior. I downloaded the um, this report of homicides in Australia that, that provided a little breakdown by age group. I haven't found something more recent, but I'm willing to bet that this doesn't necessarily vary that much year on year, um, but that most of the homicides uh, are, conduct are conducted by men and men under the age of 34. The largest group is in the 18 to 24 age group. 
the, these number of murders are lower than what was in um, New Orleans or Detroit back when I used to live in the United States. But nationwide, um, the vast majority of these um, uh, are actually in 35 to 49 year uh, age group. Um, but as you saw, those those kind of bars were higher than the um, than the uh, lower age groups. But so still, a number of um, perpetrators are more likely to be men than, men than women, and they're more likely to be unemployed than employed. You see the graphs here with the subtle arrows um, that the unemployed across those three most common age groups, 18 to 24, 25 to 34, and 35 to 49, that if you're unemployed, definitely when you're 18 to 24, but even when you're 35 to 49, that... Um, that you're more likely to um, be a perpetrator. So la unemployment is going to be an ongoing issue that people, if they have a way to earn their own resources, um, something to do and a way to contribute, um, you're less likely to, to have those lowered opportunity costs to be able to, uh, to engage in these kind of behavior. Uh, overall, there's a, there's a wide differentiation across states for the average age of the population. I showed you a couple of population graphs, but you see Australia is like um, Northern Europe, uh, North America, in being relatively old with a median age in the 30s or 40s. Um, in Australia, our median age is 38.4, which puts the median age two decades older than in Rwanda with the um, median age of 18.8. .8. Uganda next door only has 15. Gaza Strip also, which we're going to talk, uh, touch on in a second, uh, 15. Um, Japan, the median age is 46, so almost a decade older than uh, Australia on average, the median person, and 30 years older than uh, Gaza or Uganda. So there's a wide differentiation across states for the average age of the, uh, of the population. So how do these things... How, what's the causal story that connects youth bulges to violence right that this is one of those slow moving background conditions that might change over a couple of years or a couple of decades but not in the quick kind of um, triggering fashion that a plane blowing out of the sky in rwanda might have an effect so you see uh, uganda here with this uh, median age of 15 you can see how that that would come about the um, um Erdahl article, I think, is the most cited in this field and um, outlining the most common explanations in the literature for why youth bulges increase the probability of conflict. First of all is the direct effect, just if you're the pure size of um, the youth bulge should have a direct effect on conflict. And then the other article, um, the other arguments are interactive. Right, like with these building blocks that we're um, using in this class, um, with political institutions uh, having an interactive effect, or environmental factors having an interactive effect, that a lot of these relationships are um, exacerbated by um, other variables that that uh, intervene in, in between the two, like uh, demographic uh, dividend. Um, if there's a, a smaller cohort, like f for me, for the Generation X, um, if you have a smaller bulge, then you have that demographic dividend. It makes it easier to get jobs than in uh, areas in which you do have. Economic growth should offset that um, risk of having a larger population in part because there's more resources to re redistribute to people without jobs or economic growth that would enable higher job creation. Higher education actually can make things worse. Um, Dave Mason and um, Ted Robert Gurr and others have talked about relative deprivation, the J curve, when what you expect to have and what you actually have diverge, that's when you're more likely to see violence. And education, um, a side effect of it is you get perspective on where you are in the broader scheme of things and you have the ability and access to information and to synthesize it that could increase your um, dissatisfa uh, dissatisfaction with um, 
uh, with the current state of affairs within your government, and that might make you more likely to use violence. Terrorism as well. Um, Erdahl uses a couple of different dependent variables. In the terrorism literature, there's established relationships with being a suicide bomber and having higher levels of education, often being an engineering student, um, leading to increasing uses of violence and increasing um, knowledge about ideological factors that would um, lead you to want to have preferences for certain um, types of uh, state government. Urbanization and the youth bulge can make things worse. As we're going to touch on in a second when we talk about urbanization, highly concentrated amounts of youth um, with larger amounts of them reduces opportunity costs. It makes it easier to uh, communicate, coordinate, and to be able to take action. Um, so uh, more urban areas have uh, that increased expectation of uh, conflict when there's a um, youth bulge. And autocracies, when people are dissatisfied um, with the autocratic nature of the government, um, with a youth bulge, you should have an increased risk of political violence and, and conflict. You can kind of see this with the street protests in Belarus that are ongoing as I record this video, um, and with uh, also um, Alexander Navalny, the opposition figure in in Russia in a in a Berlin hospital with a suspected poisoning. There was um, increasing amounts of protests in Russia during time periods, and then there's a crackdown, um, job opportunities going down in autocratic societies when there's more people who are not feeling like they're being provided for um, might lead to increasing risks and conflict. And um, yeah, this, this would link to Homer Dixon's argument that you know, unequal um, scarcity and that you have some that have a lot and many that don't have that much, um, that structural scarcity could increase the risk of, of conflict. Um, so yeah, I, that is, that is what I had for youth bulges. It is an area of research that was popular a while back, but I think is one of the more distinct along with urbanization and explanation for political violence and conflict linked to the Collier and Hoffler in 1998 article in which you have um, the, the potential um, benefits for, for being a member of a group uh, going up if, you're, um, if your uh, other opportunities aren't that high or that relative to what you have, those, those benefits might be more substantial and the opportunity cost would be lower. So youth bulges are something that people will often throw in as a control variable along with population. But as you can see with a number of different factors that Erdahl looks at, there's um, multiple pathways that might um, justify uh, there being a relationship. The very few people make the kind of refined interactive arguments that Erdahl does. So let's turn to urbanization.